can change the world. We are very fortunate to have with us Scott Jackson from Global Impact. It certainly is a, an organization that is having a true global impact. Scott, welcome. Thank you very much, Sam. So you run the whole shebang, right? Yes. As of May 1st, I'm the president and CEO of Global Impact. And it, for people who are, are getting their first introduction into Global Impact, what exactly do you do? Certainly. Well, Global Impact is 60 years old and was really founded so that the international non-governmental organizations in the United States could be represented in these large-scale workplace giving campaigns. Start out with the federal government's employee giving campaign and has grown now to over 500 employee giving campaigns. Roughly half of those are public sector, mm -hmm. state, federal, and local, and the other half are private sector. When I go into the website, which is charity.org, by the way, and we're going to be having it up several times during the interview, when I, I go into the website, I see projects of all different kinds all over the world. Do you, what kind of involvement do you have in the projects themselves? Well, our, our uh, processes in terms of being involved with projects is really threefold. First of all is we really work hard to certify in a whole series of criteria all of the funded charities that we work with, everyone from World Vision and Save and Care to um, Somali Mom. And so there's quite a certification process we go mm -hmm. through. The second category is that we really identify their work in one of seven major human resource areas. And those pretty much envelop the Millennium Development Goals. Mm -hmm. um, and then thirdly is we really work hard at them to get uh, progress reports, impact reports that can continually be put back in front of the donors. What, uh, what does it take to be an organization, an NGO that you would work with? Um, well, that's changed over time. Uh, early on in Global Impact's history, it was a, really about uh, well-known organizations, well-regarded, uh, those who could be certified, had good, solid uh, 990 reports, um, and were doing great work, uh, and had a good brand. But today has changed because uh, donors, whether they're individual donors or corporate donors, really are connecting with issues and causes that are important to them. And so the organization may not be large and it might, may not be well known, but it may be very effective in its field. And so we're working now with a whole range of organizations that are truly engaged with the donors, very mm -hmm. focused on the donor donors' interests as well. Perfect segue into a topic we have to talk about with you, which is trends in global philanthropy. Something that I've noticed is the term impact investment uh, it seems to be the latest flavor of the day. Yes, and Stan, uh, one of the reasons I was excited about joining Global Impact and came from PATH uh, was the whole, I think, opportunity and crossroads that we're at to engage private philanthropy. If you look at the landscape, public sector funding is not going to be growing at the same kind of rate that it did the last decade, mm -hmm. if at all. And so really to be continue the progress we've made, whether it's children, uh, not dying from preventable diseases, a number of other areas, then we have to rely on private philanthropy. And so impact investing and impact philanthropy, I think, are both very important trends. Impact investing, there's some sort of a small return on investment. Mm -hmm. Impact philanthropy, there's a hopefully large social return. And the whole notion of shared value, uh, so that corporations are beginning to get much more serious about uh, not only measuring uh, the work that they fund, but also making sure that it aligns with their business opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing some very interesting trends. Individual giving for international is just starting to, to grow again. It was not recessionary proof. We thought it was. And actually, the data this year shows that it, it wasn't. But it is starting to grow. Um, corporate giving has grown by over 16% this year in mm -hmm. 2012. So we're beginning to see an increase in corporate giving. And I think overall, international is beginning to be, you know, one of the top three sectors that Americans sense that they should be involved with. Mm -hmm. So the, the signs are good, um, but of course the need is great. Why do you think it is that Americans are, are giving again to global uh, philanthropic ventures when there are some bad places on the world? Yeah, there really are. Um, you know, it's interesting because... I think that uh, as a society that we uh, very often do have a hard time distinguishing between um, the politics, 
uh, the bad players in the world, whether it's in um, a Kenya mall or in Syria, but then ultimately the humanitarian need, and I think even um, um, more connected is what can we do about it? I think when Americans can see that something positive can be done, they're much more willing to give. It might have been 20, 30 years ago that they might have given simply to the need, but as you suggested in terms of impact, uh, philanthropy, uh, people really want to know that they're making a difference. You know, and you talked a little bit about this with regard to metrics and, and making a difference, and corporations are increasing their interest in global philanthropy at the same time while they are seeking business opportunities as well. And, and is that mix okay? Is it okay for companies to give, but they want to help their businesses too? It is, but I think there's a really important alignment process that needs to occur. So uh, if you're a, a global health organization, mm -hmm. there are some corporations that are going to be easier for you to work with than others. Uh, human trafficking, uh, you know, really it, it, the whole range of issues. There's a need for both the nonprofit and for the corporation to feel like there's a good match. And then I think it's really all about um, co-designing and being respectful of each other's, you know, mission. And often uh, it's just not possible. So I think that we really have to look at a whole spectrum. It's not going to be, it's not going to be um, um, across the board, you know, the same. It's really going to depend upon the partnership and the network. But we have to be willing to partner. And I think both sides cannot be so pure that they forget the people they're trying to help. So uh, what I'm hearing from you is that this isn't necessarily a 90-day turnaround as we as the world becomes a better place to live. No, that's right. In fact, uh, many of the what we would call business-aligned or strategic-aligned partnerships are taking somewhere between 8 and 12 months to put together. But they're longer term, they're larger amounts of money, and, uh, and they have, I think, more measurable impact uh, um, uh, accountability and mm -hmm. metrics. Let's talk about, I mean, I, I know that, that you don't get directly involved uh, too much in the operations of the of, of your recipient organizations, but you probably have some favorite stories, though, don't you? Well, I, you know, I do. I mean, I think, um, I think that this year uh, we've seen some really impactful work across the board. Uh, one area has been with women and girls. Mm -hmm. So uh, World Vision, uh, CARE, uh, Save the Children, uh, plan, and also uh, a group called ICRW, International Center for Research in Women, all are having tremendous impact on uh, reducing child marriage, on uh, reducing fistula, and not only in Senegal, but, but now taking that to a whole countrywide platform in Senegal, eliminating fistula, and taking it beyond to other parts of uh, West Africa. So we're really seeing some fantastic uh, progress stories. Mm -hmm. What do you think right now, globally, are you hearing? Because I'm sure that you have a, a lot of, uh, of organizations that would say to you, you know, hey, we're doing great things, you know, help us. What are you hearing the most about what's the biggest need out there? I think the, uh, there's, there's really uh, kind of two major trends. One is, is that every nonprofit is really needing to look at their strategy for revenue diversification. So during this time in which um, everyone's coming out of a recession, it's still very slow economic growth, uh, you, you, you must be very intentional about growing global philanthropy for your organization. Mm. So you may have started with a public sector dominant uh, donor source and you need to go uh, to a like-minded related set of donors, whether institutional foundations or others. The second trend is definitely measuring impact organizations that don't measure impact and don't make that available, not only on their website, but Facebook, Twitter, are going to be left behind. Hmm. When you talk about measuring impact, you're not talking just about a financial impact, you're talking about the social impact as well, right? That's right. Yeah, they really have to be able to measure the social impact of the funds and of the donors that they're working with. That's hard for organizations though, isn't it? Very hard, but I think that more and more organizations are learning to do it at uh, a project level, but then at an organization level. And what we'd love to see is for them to start doing it around an issue level or a sector level. Hmm. So to be able to really have um, a scorecard on women and girls issues mm -hmm. or on 
global health in certain areas, non-infectious diseases or other areas. And I think the Clinton Global Initiative has helped to support those kind of networks and that kind of thinking so you can think more about a sector. And right here at Clinton Global Initiative 2013, uh, Rainmakers is sponsored by uh, two entities dealing in food supply. Uh, one of them here in the United States and then one of them Post Harvest Project working, working globally. Um, there does seem to be more of an interest in food security in relation to everything else, food and health, food and, and yeah. poverty alleviation, food and all sorts of things. Is, is that what you're seeing as well? Absolutely. In fact, uh, Stan, I was in a briefing uh, early this morning before the first plenary here at CGI, and more than 20 global health leaders actually identified integration with food security uh, as one of their major priorities for the next few years. Mm -hmm. CGI 2013, this is, um, you're a veteran of, of Clinton Global Initiative annual meetings. Uh, this is such an interesting place. If there is an organization out here that's watching this uh, and they're wanting to get some advice on CGI, do I go, do I not, what do I get out of it, what can I expect, what would you tell them? Well, I would probably tell them uh, uh, three things. One is, is that the Clinton Global Initiative and the community of international development is now a year-round community. And so even if they're not a member or they are a member, to really stay engaged with the community because, as the President mentioned this morning, networks and partnerships are definitely the way that we all must work together. The second is to be a member, and I think there you have to be very intentional. You have to really understand that this is about visibility, it's about connections, about networks. You can't assume that there's a return on investment ratio. It's really about being a part of a community, but you have to be intentional about what you're going to accomplish. And thirdly is I think that just being here in New York this week is not only a celebration of progress, but also a determination of moving uh, international development goals forward. And so even if you're not a member, I think being here and being part of that community is important. Hmm. Let's talk about accomplishments just for a minute. Let's talk about it, the accomplishments of global impact. What do you think to date are, have been your greatest accomplishments? And I've got to ask the other part, what's the accomplishments yet to be? We won't call them failures. Certainly. Certainly. Well, um, we are really proud that we've raised $1.6 billion for the... Billion. $1.6 billion wow. for the international sector. And that's over a long period of time and often in $10, $20 uh, commitments by donors on a monthly basis. And so we're very proud of that. I think that as we look ahead, our challenge and opportunity is to really go from being a trusted partner in workplace giving to a trusted partner in growing all forms of global philanthropy. So we really see ourselves needing to step our game up and be able to provide advisory services and strategic plans and connections with key organizations and alliance members like Rainmakers. We also want to be able to manage campaigns, both traditional workplace campaigns and signature campaigns. We're just launching a wonderful new effort with Hilton Worldwide, the corporation, where we'll be working with them for a, a 90 country plus resiliency and disaster relief uh, campaign and platform. Wow. And thirdly is, you know, how do we provide some of the back office support services? We serve as the Secretariat for the Global Health Council, as well as for the Hilton Humanitarian Award laureates. And in that role, we can really support collaboratives and partnerships for fundraising and marketing. So we're quite keen to see kind of this much more proactive three-part approach to growing global philanthropy, advisory services, campaigns of all forms, and then secretariat and support services. Scott Jackson, thank you for being with us. Rainmaker believes we can change the world One life, one heart, one soul, one mind at a time Rainmaker believes we can change